Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to create a C++ application using the Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows Desktop Edition. So when you start the program, this is the opening screen that you will typically be presented with. So if you look going across the top, we have our menu with different options to access, a toolbar with different commands to access. You may or may not have a toolbox screen that you can expand and collapse just by clicking on it. You may have a start page that appears and it gives you some good links to get started with in programming and some places to explore. There is also usually a tab for Solution Explorer and we'll be looking at this in a little more detail after we have an application created and started. And the bottom of your screen has an output panel. And again, as we start to work with a program in here, we'll look at what this does. So this is generally the default setup that you get right after you do an installation of the Visual Studio Express 2012. Now to create a new program, we could click on New Project from the Start page. And another way is to go up to File and New Project. So I'm going to choose that option just in case maybe your start page isn't showing up. So from the new project screen, we're going to choose under installed, under templates, you want to expand the visual C++ options and we're going to choose Win32. And then under the Win32 options over on the side, you want to make sure you choose a Win32 console application. Then at the bottom of the screen, we're going to give our project a name. So I'm just going to call this the standard Hello World Program. And you can see that it's defaulting to putting the files into a projects folder inside a Visual Studio 2012 folder, which is going to my documents folder. So I think I'm just going to keep that default, but you can certainly change that to another location by browsing here. So if you have another place where you want to save your files to, like a flash drive or another place in your documents folder that you want to keep your projects, you can browse to change that location. You can also see that it is automatically giving me a solution name, which is the same name that I'm typing in here for my project. I generally like to keep the name of the project and the solution the same. Now a project is sort of like a bundle where it's keeping all of the files and everything that has to do with that project all together in the same location. So this is going to create a folder that's going to hold all of our project files and Microsoft calls these solutions. So over here I'm going to keep the option checked off where it says create directory for solution. What that means is it's going to create a folder with this name and put all of our files inside this. We don't need to worry about adding source control for any of these examples so I'm going to leave that unchecked and we'll click OK to continue to the next step. Okay so now we have the Win32 application wizard and just a couple of steps in here to set up our console application. So I'm going to click Next. Don't just hit Finish to skip this step because we do need to make a couple of changes in here. So I'm going to click Next and you can see here the application type defaults to console application so we want to keep it that way. And under Additional Options I'm going to uncheck Precompiled Header security development life cycle checks and I'm going to choose empty project. That way we're going to start with a completely blank project and create it from scratch so that you can see how the whole thing gets made. So next I'm going to click finish and it creates the project and so we have our created project in here. 
So now our Solution Explorer has some things in it. We have the entire solution called Hello World. And then within that, we have a series of other folders. And these will contain things that our project will need in order to run. So we created an empty project. So really, there isn't anything in here right now. And what we're going to do is to create a new source file. So to add a new source file that will contain my C++ code, I'm going to come over here to the Solution Explorer and right click on the source files and choose Add New Item. All right, the new item that I want to add is a C++ file. So you want to make sure under Installed, expand the Visual C++ options and then from the right side choose a C++ file. Right, that's going to contain our source code. Now down here it gives it the name source.cpp which is fine. I'm just going to change this so that you can see that we can change the name. And so I'm just going to say hello source. And you can see that it's going to put it into my hello world and then there's another folder inside that called Hello World. So that's where it's going to default. So I'm just going to let it keep it there so it puts it into the right place. And I'm going to click Add. All right, so now I have a hello source.cpp file. You can see over here in the Solution Explorer that it also shows up under my source files. So now I'm just going to paste in some code to save us a little time. Right, this is just the source code for a standard Hello World C++ file. Now you can see as I've made a change here, there's a little asterisk on the tab to show that it hasn't been saved. So I can come up here, I can do the icon on the toolbar to save it, and also the keyboard shortcut is Control S, and I can also come up here and do File, and I can do save all or save hello source. So any of those, save my file, the asterisk is then gone. So now all my changes have been saved. I always like to save my files before I run and test them in case some, for some reason the program crashes and I have to restart it. Then that way I don't lose my changes. So to run this, I'm going to come up on the toolbar. There's the local Windows debugger. So I'm going to click that little green arrow there to run my program. And it'll start to run and build in this bottom output section. So I'm going to click that. Pops up with a message to say this is out of date. It always does this when you're running the program for the first time. Do you want to build it? So I'm going to click yes. Now if you don't want to see this all the time, you can check this off. but for now, I'm just going to leave this unchecked. So we can see that it's building down here. And it may take a minute or two, depending on the speed of your processor. All right, my build succeeded. And you can see that my console window popped open for a second, and then it disappeared. So unless you're really quick and able to see what's going on there, what's happening is it comes in here, it runs this program, and return zero means it ended the program without any problem, and so then the console disappears. So what we want to do is we want to pause the system so that we can actually see what's going on. So before my return zero, I'm going to put in a system pause command, All right? and then I'm going to save it, and now I'm going to rerun it, and I'm going to say yes to rebuild it, Again, you'll see it building down here. And now my console pops up and we can see hello world. And then we see press any key to continue. So this press any key to continue is coming from this system pause command. And it's running into my hello world. So we'll look at how to fix that in a second. So to continue with this, I'm going to just press any key on my keyboard and the console disappears. Now so that that message doesn't run into my with my system pause, I'm going to put in a line break here. So I'm just going to put in my stream output operator 
and I'm going to do ENDL, right? That's an L, not a one. ENDL, which is for end line. So that will create a line space at the end of this. So again, I'm going to save it. We'll run it. This time I'm going to check this so it doesn't keep popping up. All right, so now we have our hello world and then press any key to continue on the next line. So again, I'm going to press any key. So we could add another line space in there. That's a typical question that I get a lot from people. How do I put in two? Well, I'll put in another and ENDL, right? Save my project, rerun it. Okay, and here's the output in my console. So that's creating a basic Hello World program. Let's take a look at the files that are created with this so that you have an understanding because there's a lot of things that are going on with this. So I'm going to go to my file manager. So I'm going to double click on this folder to show you the folders that were created automatically with the Visual C++. All right, we have an SLN file, which is the solution file. So when you open up that folder and you want to open up your project again, this SLN file is the file that you double click on. Uh, let's see, if I open up this Hello World folder, you can see this is the Hello Source file that has the CPP code in it. And if I open up the debug folder here, you can see the other files that are generated by the Visual C++ program. And for the most part, we don't deal with those, but they do need to be in with all of your other files in order for your project to work correctly. So let me go back up another level here. Right, so this is the main folder that the project files are in, and it created a debug folder here. So if I open that, you'll see the exe file, which is the executable file that is created, and that is what's actually running in the console window when you are running it in the Visual C++ program. So if you're sending your files to be checked, what you want to do is zip up this entire folder. Then this folder contains everything that uh, they will need in order to run and test your project. And just a quick review on zipping up your files, right? The whole project folder is what you will have to submit for your lab assignments. So you're going to right click on the folder and go to send to compressed zip folder. Now, I get this error message saying file not found, no read permission. So I'm going to click OK. And the reason that's happening is because this project is still open in my Visual C++ program. Right, so this is still open in here. So what I'm going to do is I can go to file and close solution and what that will do is keep the program open but the solution is now closed or I could close out or exit out of Studio Express 2012 completely which is what I'm going to do right now so I'm just going to close this now back in my folders I can right click on this send to compress the zip folder and now it's creating a zip file that contains everything. So this zip file is what you want to submit. Now, as I said before, if I wanted to open up a program that I had created already, I could do that by going to the Visual Studio 2012 program and opening it up there. I can open up this folder and double click the SLN file and that will open up my project. So let me show you, demonstrate that for you. Okay, so then it opens back up into my IDE with all of my code intact here. So let me close this again. I'm just gonna go to File and Close Solution and to show you how to open up a project from within Visual Studio Express. So I can go to File now you want to open the project and not just a file, right? So you want to go to Open Project, 
rather than just a specific file. Then I'm going to navigate to my folder that contains my solution and you want to open up the SLN file. Right? Don't make the mistake of going in here and trying to find the C++ file. Right? We want to open up the SLN file. That's what the Visual C++ program is looking for. It's looking for the SLN file. And embedded within that SLN project is our source file, our CPP file. So that's the basics of working with Visual Studio Express 2012 to open it up, create a new project, add a CPP file with code, running it and testing it, and opening up projects.